Hello everyone, my name is Pepsilk, and before I start today's video, I just want to say Happy New Year to everyone. I hope that everyone has their own goals, ambitions, and resolutions to make 2024 the best year it can be and spread nothing but positivity. I know that the past year for me has been rough in a lot of places, and I plan to change that a lot myself this year. Something that you'll be able to see as I move the channel to new ground and try a lot of new things, but also staying consistent and true to myself. Leave all the negativity behind in the past and start anew. New year, new me, so people say. Thank you guys for supporting me for the last year or few years that I've been on YouTube. I can't wait to see what the future has in store. Today, we're going to be talking about the top 5 best games of 2023. 2023 has been an amazing year for gaming, with great games coming out every month and so many options to pick from that I wouldn't be surprised if someone else's list was different from mine. From RPGs to Souls-likes, adventures and remakes, this is my top 5 list for 2023 and a quick disclaimer before I start listing. This is strictly my opinion, so don't get your nannies in the twist if a game you like either isn't in this list or it's placed in a different position because every one of these games are great in their own rights and you shouldn't necessarily take my word for it. Play one or play each of these games and have fun. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe and notifications turned on for more gaming content. Let's get into it, shall we? Remnant 2 is a third person shooter that takes Souls-like and adds guns to it. I was incredibly hyped about this AA game thanks to the sheer amount of marketing and presence this game had prior to its release. And it's safe to say that it exceeded my expectations and is a great game to play solo or with two other bodies. It takes everything from the first game, from the ashes and improves upon it, while also adding many new additions such as a new archetype system, new worlds and plenty of secrets and items to discover. Which is great for the first few weeks of release as so many people on the subreddit were discovering new things every single day. I played the entire game solo and had little to no issues with the exception of performance which was fixed shortly after. And the campaign is procedurally generated, meaning you'll always get a different experience every time you play through it. Something that was retained from the original. If you're looking for a Souls-like game that's different to the norm or just want a, a fun shooter, Remnant 2 offers this perfectly and with the game's first DLC, The Awakened King, recently releasing and two more to come, this game is continuing to build and increase the amount of content available to make it as replayable as possible. Until you get everything, of course. Being a Dead Space 2 lover, funnily enough, I've never played the original Dead Space 2 to how clunky and janky it looked from watching gameplay, despite it being one of the best horror games around. Now, and for its time. Fast forward to 2023 and EA's motive gives us a remake of the game that is both exceptional and near perfect, staying true to the original while also adding new additions and changing sections of the game to make it more accessible to both new players and veterans alike, such as the side quests that help expand the story on the origins of the Necromorphs and the inhabitants of the Ishimura, and the annoying turret section with the asteroids being swapped out for a simple aim and asteroid and press slash click to shoot. The game is also scary as hell and uses a dynamic audio and spawn system to keep you on your toes at all times, ensuring that every time you play through it, it'll be a different experience. Couple that with a story that always makes me feel bad for Isaac Clarke given the events that he goes through as he navigates the Ishimura, and you're in for a Resident Evil-like experience that not only influenced the genre, but is also just great fun. A must-play for survival horror fans. Can I also just mention how badass Isaac's suit is in this game too? It looks so freaking cool and the iconic animation when you upgrade the suit is just, ah, so good. The game sold so well that EA was sending emails to creators and players asking about what they'd like to see for Dead Space, with a lot of people praying for a Dead Space 2 remake, which I'm absolutely down for. It'll give me a reason to hop back into the sprawl once again and see what new things they add to help wrap things up or add more details about how the marker was built and constructed. This is probably going to be a hot take, but hear me out here. Cyberpunk 1.6 prior to 2.0 was a completely different game with different mechanics and systems that didn't feel as fleshed out and for the longest time was the build that although players stuck with for the time, it was the update that a lot of people weren't really playing or experiencing. When Phantom Liberty got announced and alongside it, a massive update to the entire game, hype was building exponentially and with it releasing alongside Phantom Liberty, the game has changed significantly to where the play count for Cyberpunk soared to the highest it's been in a long time, and the general consensus was that the game felt completely different, enough to make it a brand new game and the game it should have been at launch, and that's why I decided to add it to this list. It's a whole new game and an old player like me plays through it and honestly, this deserves to be here. I'd feel bad if I said it didn't, given that the game did come out back in 2020, but I just felt that it deserved to be here. 
And I haven't even touched on Phantom Liberty yet. Not only is it a whole nother storyline to the vanilla game, it touches on a genre which I don't see or hear being talked about these days in gaming, which is spy thriller slash espionage. I'm talking James Bond and Mission Impossible, that sort of thing, where you get to experience these cool spy scenarios alongside a gripping and dark story that forced me to make one of, if not the most important decision in a video game and questions your loyalty, the people around you, and what you would do to save yourself when death is at your doorstep. Alongside additional activities, side quests, gigs, and gear to get, Cyberpunk is in the best state it's ever been and is considered finished, with the sequel to begin work in the coming months. And CD Projekt Red should be proud of themselves for how far they've come and how much they stayed committed in bringing this game back to life with all the hate and drama coming their way. I get a feeling people may hate me for putting this game into the list, but for any Cyberpunk 1.6s, this was God's work for us, giving us not only a reason to replay it all again, but to try out all the new things that were given to us. I can't wait to see what comes for the future of this franchise. Arguably another hot take since this was the most popular game of 2023, but hear me out. Prior to Baldur's Gate 3, I was never a fan of CRPGs or turn-based games as I didn't like to use my brain to sit down and think about the moves I make before making them. At least not spending 5 minutes thinking about all the different scenarios that could happen from one turn like I'm a goddamn FPS gamer, we don't spend 5-10 to 10 minutes thinking about what happens, we just simply do. However, given Baldur's Gate's success and it becoming a top seller early access game on Steam as a result of Bear Sex, this is not a joke, seriously look it up, the game actually got knowledge as a result of this reveal, which I'd argue is where the game started to pop off, I decided to buy the game shortly after release and it blew me right out of the water. Not only did I find a new love for CRPGs and turn-based games as a whole, it also shows that a great developer team such as Larian Studios can do when heart, mind and soul all come together. Something that seems to be lost from the gaming industry as a result of greed, which results in rushed, half-baked and undercooked products. Or as the act man says, Modern Gaming. Baldur's Gate 3 boasts replayability, companions, a great story shaped by every decision you make, 174 hours of cutscenes, races and classes, all set within the Dungeons and Dragons universe and making use of a D&D 5th edition rule set. It also has 4 player co-op, so you can construct an internet or LAN party if you're feeling old, and play like the good old days of the Xbox and PlayStation 2 era of gaming. What I do want to say is that this game puts the role in roleplay, as you can really roleplay as the race and character you are, given that's one of the best things that the D&D board games do. I made an Orc Barbarian for my run, and every dialogue option I saw with Orc or Barbarian I chose it because I wanted to show who I really am, something I don't normally do in these sorts of RPGs where you can forge your own experience. Baldur's Gate 3 is a testament to gaming and an example that I hope other developers can take notes on and realize, yes, this is how we should make our game, ease of development, giving updates to the community and not rushing things out to the front door for a quick buck. I'm looking at you Call of Duty, you hungry money c this is without a doubt one of the greatest games of our generation and should be put into everyone's bucket list. I mean that. And no, you don't need to play the first two to know what's going on. Just jump right into it and enjoy hundreds of hours of engaging combat, dialogue and fun. This right here, My Childhood, a game I used to play on the Wii at my Tudor's house when I was younger. A game I've played through quite a lot back on the PS2, Resident Evil 4. When I first saw the trailer for the remake, my body was filled with excitement. So much that I decided to play the original a few weeks before it came out to gauge my hype. And here's some of those Leon lines again. You know which one I'm talking about. I've been expecting you, my brethren. No thanks, bro. Playing through the remake, I felt young. Not too young, but young to where going through some of the parts I love slash hate such as the water section, the prison, Del Lago, that part is still poo poo, Krauser, the minecarts, hell, the entire castle for that matter, really helped me appreciate the game for what it was back then and what it is now. Capcom stayed faithful to the original and added plenty of new additions while also making changes, such as the new action combat system, allowing Leon to not only dodge attacks but also parry melee attacks and throwables, which if timed right, prompts him to do the roundhouse kick that he's so well known for. Another one being the boss fights such as Krauser and Salazar, especially Salazar's which was well needed because of how easy and underwhelming he was in the original. Instead of him being a standing still point and shoot target, he's now a moving being, with an arena that encourages the player to stay on their feet and keep moving to avoid all of Ramon's projectiles and vomit he throws at you. 
Krause's fight is more of a guerrilla tactics approach, taking note of his traps and carefully navigating through the landscape instead of obtaining the broken pieces to open the gate like the original. Once you get to the final phase though, it's pretty much the same as before. The removal of QTEs or quick time events, well, most of them, is also another big change given that OG RE4 is known for its ridiculous amount of QTEs. Additional missions, a weapons wheel, and moving while shooting are just a few more that I can think of, but there's so much that in a sense, it's exactly what a remake should be. Staying true to the original while also adding new things to it. There's a lot more I'd love to say about Resident Evil 4 Remake, but we'd be here for way too long. One final note to add is that the separate race DLC is good. Really good, in fact. And makes me wonder if Ada will ever get her own Resident Evil game, because I feel like she should. It's long overdue, Capcom. Capcom also learned from their original mistakes with the Resident Evil 3 Remake, as that was rushed and wasn't up to snuff like the Resident Evil 2 Remake was, given that it had a short development cycle. I can't wait to see what Capcom does with RE5 if that is the next remake they work on. And that's my top 5 list for the best games of 2023. I'd like to know what your best games are in the comments and what other games I didn't include on this list that are worth playing. It would give me and others options on what games to play. Thanks for watching. I'll have more coming to you soon. Peace.